G'day YouTube, my name's Lance, welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. Well the weather report, <laughs> it's a bit chilly, 5 to 21 and the 5 feels like 2.3 according to the, the phone app, so yeah a bit chilly, I've got the coat on, um, I have been out in my little machine shop here, it's early in the morning but I have been out in my machine shop and I, I put the aircon on reverse cycle so heat the place up a little bit. And um, yeah, look, it's not too bad out here. Um, the coat will come off a bit later on, and yeah, we'll be off and racing. Um, I'm actually, <laughs> I'm back to old school. I've, I've just got the the microphone on the camera. No extra microphones. It's only a small space in here. And this is how we used to do it ages ago. So um, I thought, oh bugger it, I'll just I'll work with that. So. Um, a few things, <laughs> a few things went on in the week, and the reason I'm up the front here is last Tuesday, like Monday when I was home, I did the stew. I got the little Ford 2000 running, and um, I was fine. Tuesday, that knee where I tore my meniscus in my knee started playing up. Tuesday night, holy dooly, and I went to work Wednesday, and I was there for like four or five hours, and. Um, to get up to my office upstairs, there's 16 steps, and those steps were absolutely giving me a caning with my with my dicky knee, and it was taking me quite a few minutes to get up and down. And I was a bloody geriatric old fart, but anyway, <laughs> so I said the dude up this, I'm out of here, you know, I'm going home, and so I've been home ever since, and um, I've been trying to stay off the knee, and look, it, it's getting better. It's it's. The first couple of days there, holy dooly, there was just no relief from it. Um, I have some um, Panadol Osteo, but then the doctor gave me some um, painkillers, and I, I don't have them unless I need them sort of thing, but I was I was into them early in the week, but towards the end of the week it started coming good, and look, it's a lot better now. Um, it's still a bit sore, a bit tender, and... Um, through the day it'll come good and I'll think oh well I'll just nip up here and nip there and go up the shed and do this and that and um, yeah that night it plays up so I just got to calm the farm and um, yeah try and stay off it a little bit so um, so late last week and this week I'm working out of my little shipping container office here I've got the laptop set up with a big screen there so I can see what's going on um, I didn't get the video done last week of the Grand Parade at Villa Wheeler because the, the internet here is just rubbish. Um, I, I will get it done, um, but yeah, it's just, I can take it into the shop and I can get it uploaded in like 45 minutes or something like that, a, a standard stew, but here it takes three, four, five hours sort of thing, so. Um, so yeah, just how it goes, um, and sometimes to get it to upload, I can't do it here, I've got to actually take my laptop and put it near the modem in there and it, it, it speeds it up an, an awful lot but in the shipping container here it's like a Faraday cage and you get no signal and um, so on a hot or cold day I have the aircon on and I've got to have the door open so I've got some internet and look it's enough to do normal stuff as in um, you know website things or letters or emails and all that sort of thing it's fine for that but when you're uploading a, a, a video well yeah it's just not quite up to scratch but um, the little Ford, Ford, Ford 2000 I showed a video of that last week I was hoping to show a bit more of that this week but um, I'm trying to stay away from it <laughs> just hitting the Ford uh, hitting the Massey Ferguson 20 um, there's a couple of little jobs and I'm, I'm gonna go and fiddle but I am trying to stay away um, on the Ford 2000 it had a um, the pipe from the air cleaner to the carby inlet was missing and Biddy, the fellow I bought it off, I got him to have a look and he came into the shop last Tuesday with a pipe and there's no way it was the right one, it was a blue one but he's got a petrol Dexter so I think he's got that mixed up so um, so with that I had to work out how to make one, I couldn't see one on um, the, the wreckers overseas that I got the inlet manifold off I thought they may have had one, but they don't. Um, and yeah, I just couldn't find one. So the job was I went to the local exhaust place that I get on with, and um, I made one. So that's the pipe. I showed this on my um, socials, and it's 
So I bought a 45 with a long ends on it. Oh, 45 up here with long ends on it. And a 90 and a piece of straight. And I thought, well, surely out of that I can tack something together. So this is what I've come up with. And look, it does the job. It sits in there nicely. I've had to weld the two together. I've had to, you can see I've had to relieve in the back there because there's a manifold bolt that it comes right down close to. But that will fit on now with the original hoses. So, um, and this pipe, there's an interesting thing. I, I, when I rung them up, I told them what I was doing and they said, oh, you want to make that out of stainless? And I said, oh, no, nah, just mild steel. Um, it'd be fine. The, um, I'm not sure if I could weld the stainless. Well, well I, I, I could get by with it, but I said, oh, yeah, I'll just get standard. And he said, look, he said, we've got stainless bins there, 409, I think he might have said. But anyway, he said, I've got stainless there. He said, it's the same price. It's easy to weld. Um, I'll make you some out of that. And he said, you won't have trouble. It'll be good. And I said, yeah, all right then. So I went with that. And look, it was good to weld. It was okay. Um, even though I, I couldn't get the the seam around here exactly perfect, just by, you know, tacking it, doing long tacks sort of thing, I could work my way around it. But um, normally what I do with a pipe like this or, or something like this is, you'll notice it's black there, and that's the, um, that's the CRC rust converter. And so I cleaned it all with thinners and wiped it down and all that, then... Um, sprayed it with the CRC rust converter and you can see the CRC rust converter bit on the weld there which was mild steel and where I'd ground it and things like that it's gone onto there but the um, the normal pipe here that's all got it on it too but it didn't take to it so that's just interesting um, yeah it must need the iron content to bite into it or something like that so that's okay I'll, I'll, I will probably well, it's stainless. I don't need to probably deal with it until I paint the tractor now. But, look, that's got that job done. Um, it's a bloody gangly looking thing. And that's just how it has to be. It, it sits in nice and snug and, and uses the original hoses, like I said. So, um, that's one job done. Now, um, because I've been laid up, <laughs> doesn't mean I've got to stop spending. <laughs> Jude might disagree with that, but anyway, um, the, on the bead blaster, I use the bead blaster up the back a lot, and the gun was, um, it, it's been leaking around a little needle here, and so, look, on, on eBay, they had a gun that looks exactly the same, um, it appears to be the same to me, it's got a little steel nozzle there, but I actually got some, got some more of the little ceramics little ceramic ends to go in so um so that'll be a little job just to tidy that up because um yeah the air you're losing a lot of air through the handpiece so you're losing the force in the um in the bead blasting so i bought a little a new little handpiece for that i can't remember what it was but look it was like twenty dollars or something it wasn't too bad and the same place had a couple of long air nozzles now Bloody air nozzles, I'm the only bloke in the shed, you can see it over there against the black a bit better, I'm the only bloke in the shed, and you'd wonder where they all go. <laughs> I, I buy myself some air nozzles and bug around with them, and um, oh, it looks like this one unscrews. That might be interesting, we might be able to make some adapters. Um, but, um, no, I'm just going round and round, I'll just pokes in there, so that'll probably blow off one day. I'll probably glue that in. And see how we go. But yeah, these are like ten bucks each. So, um, but yeah, I'm always looking for bloody air nozzles. And I, I've got a drawer where I put them back, and I've, I've got a couple I like to use, and a couple of, you know, emergency only. And um, yeah, I don't know where they bloody go. <laughs> I'll probably have a big clean up one day um, when I'm parked up. The kids will bloody clean the shed up and find fifty bloody air nozzles <laughs> sitting under there somewhere. So I bought a couple of them because it's good enough to have one. It's good enough to have two. And look, it matches me jacket, bloody matchy matchy. There's a bit of bullshit. Um, what I didn't show you the other day was um, when I got the inlet manifold 
from America for the Ford 2000 that had a buggered thread in the where the thermostat housing went and it was just a pulled thread and they'd known it was pulled because it sort of glued in so I pulled it out but I didn't have a 5 16th UNC helicoil set so I thought oh, I'll jump online and have a look and see what I can but I've, I've got a lot of metric sizes in helicoils because a lot of the carbs and things like that are metric and um, some of the big Imperial helicoils I've got but yeah so I ended up buying a nice helicoil kit and it comes with the drill so you have the drill the tap the insert tool and the um, the tool that breaks them off so so for those of you who are unaware um, you drill out the old thread and that's why they give you these drills then they give you a tap now this tap, they're usually just for helicoils, they don't seem to fit anything else. Um, that tap taps a thread in to your housing that's buggered. Then, I'll see if I can sit this here without dropping it all. Then the, the tool has a little slot in it there and this has a little cross it has a little cross piece in it so what happens is you put the helicoil down you bring this collar down to push like well, there's a little screw there you bring that down to support the helicoil so it would come right to the top of the helicoil and then you screw the helicoil in and the process of screwing it in um, puts a stainless steel thread into the housing and then when you're done to get rid of that little that little bead that um, for inserting you come through with this punch and you just go bang and you can see a slight relief there and it breaks off there but you and you've got to get that piece back out which is never usually a worry so um so yeah I have a draw over here I have a helicoil drawer and it gives just chocolate with metric ones but yeah the buddy 516 UMC I didn't realise I didn't have it really so that kit was about $110 or something like that um, the drills mightn't be that flash but uh, so it's quarter 20 5 16 18 3 8 16 7 16 14 and half 13 threads per inch so um, that got me out of the tin for that one. And I'll just put a little bit of plastic here to, to hold things in place. Um, and yeah, your 716th UNC and things like that. That's a common Fergie tractor size, so I imagine I'll get a bit of use out of it in time. But, um, but I do have dribs and drabs, and no doubt it's a Chinese kit, but look, it did the job. I need to fix it. Put the lid on properly because if I don't I'll bump it and the bloody thing will fall on the bench, it'll fall somewhere and then I'll be going crook. So I've got the helicoil set there and then through the week on my phone I get, you can, um, through Facebook and that you get on um, like trade tools in Bundaberg and they give the specials so um, they had specials on last week and for $80 you've got two tap and die sets. So this is the metric one. And so it's up to 12, it starts off at three mil by 0.5 and it goes up to 12 by 1.75. And look, it's just a handy, handy little kit there, 40 piece, I believe. And so that's the metric one and Here's the Imperial one. So, the same kit basically, just an Imperial. And the Imperial kit does from four 40 threads per inch, which is Imperial, right up to um, half 20. And so it has 7 16th and things like that, the common Fergie sizes. So, um, 
they're normally about 80 bucks the kit and they had them on special last week there for $79 for both kits so I jumped on that now I, I do have a lot of taps and dies and threading gear and like these these big bigger black drawers there um, I have a, like a complete drawer for UNC um, in the in the big blue tins then I have a complete drawer for UNF then metric and BSP MPT and I've, I've got a lot of stuff like that but the reason I went for that is um, the other stuff stays up in the machine shop and I'll take a tap or a die up the back and do a job and bring it back but um, I do have a that's a KC 110 piece kit and like the dies are on the top the taps are on the bottom and for the quality there just put that back um, yeah that, like that's not Sutton and PNN it's a it's a Chinese quality but for the odd sizes and the little bits and pieces on the bench here I do where I need a, a particular tap um, not to go in a machine just to use on the hand I often use that KC set but with these these are going to go up the back and you know when you just want to, most of the work up the back is not making new threads it's cleaning old threads and cleaning old threads rusty threads head studs all that it's bloody hard on taps and dies um you take your good sutton ones up there and um you know you do a set of head studs if if it's rusty or a set of final drives and if it's if it's been rusty sitting a bit and it's got rust in there it knocks the edge off those tools very quickly so that's why the cheap ones are, are good for that so we're going to go that way um and yeah well I, it's one of those things i've got the shed up the back i've got the machine shop up here and wherever you are you're in the wrong bloody place so, <laughs> so that's how it works so anyway we'll see um working at home here it gives me a chance there's less interruptions at home here um but through the week um my mate paulie that had the he's got that nice little austin 10 um when he was at villa wheeler the he'd come to go home and the bloody thing wouldn't start uh, no man i've got the i've got the cold nose that um the car wouldn't start so he winched it up on the trailer and he was telling me about it and I said, oh, I'll bring it out home here and we'll we'll have a fiddle with it. So it turned up last Monday or Tuesday or something and, and yeah, probably Monday I would say. Yeah, and um, anyway, so me and me dicky knee, I was sitting on a stool up there trying to bug around with it and, and what had happened over time, um, because it was sitting in the shipping container up the back here for a long time, um, the right up in the plug leads had corroded. And that's was what was letting him down. But look, at Bill of Wheel on the Saturday, he had it running and he went downtown for a run and, you know, it worked fine. But uh, must have been the moisture of the morning or something. He couldn't get it running. So we ended up putting new plugs in it. <laughs> I mean, new plug leads. And he was saying it was flooding, but I think it was flooding just from trying to start it so long. But I did have a carby here of Paul's that I'd gone through and I'd put new needle and seat and all that sort of thing in it. So um, we put that top on and that stopped the flooding. But we thought, yep, no worries. So we spent two afternoons on it, just tidying things up and playing around with it. And then um, he got his sister here to drop him off to come and pick it up. And he got down the road there and she's burp, burp, burp in top gear. Um, first, second, third, no worries at all. Um, fourth gear as soon as the load come on it died so normally under load if, if engines fail under load there's a bit of a glare coming in there now bloody thing um, um, if an engine misfires under load it's often electrical so we went right through the electrical again had a look made the new you know checked the new leads um, we didn't have a spare set of points but I pulled the old ones off and filed them up and cleaned them and he had a spare condenser so we fitted that and um, still the same thing and yeah it sort of had us a bit bugging and anyway we <laughs> and we just couldn't get it running as nice as it was the first time when he headed off so um, i remember back in the day um an old fellow showed me and 
with a petrol vehicle, you rev the ring out of it and you just bang your hand straight over the inlet and, do, and let, it, let it almost snuff out. Then take it off and let him pick the revs up and brrrr again. And um, we did that three or four times and bugger me, it, it must have had a little bit of shit in a jet or something like that on the car. And it drew that out and he, he reckoned it hasn't run like that in ages. So he's got his car back home again. And um, yeah, I was, I was talking to him yesterday. He's, he's going to come and help me clean the shed up and that because, you know, just labour for labour. But then he turns up with a bloody carton of rum cans and a bottle of wine for Judy. And, but he, <laughs> anyway, he's a good bloke. And, um, but yeah, he reckons it run like a beauty. He says, oh, I hadn't run like that in years. So um, he's obviously had a few troubles. So, so that's good. So, look, that took three afternoons and Saturday morning just to get that little car sorted out. And um, because we had a couple of problems that we, you know, we were chasing one. We started off chasing the flooding because he said, oh, it's flooding and, you know, that's why I can't start it. And I, I went with him. I said, yeah, good, eh? And then I pulled the rear plug off and had a check and we did have spark there, but it was obviously breaking down under compression, so... But it's running now, it's running like a top. He's got new tyres on it. New tyres for the little Austin, um, 1600 bucks for four tyres and tubes. But um, the old ones were like 30 years old, you were saying the other day. So, um, yeah, no big deal. The other thing that I've done is, um, I'm just going to move away from that glare a bit. If I can. And um, the other thing I went and did yesterday is I bought a new trailer. So, um, <laughs> Pardon me. So my old trailer's coming up for sale, and look, it's it's okay. Um, it's rated at three and a half ton. Um, it's got the ramps on the back that you can just drop down. You haven't got to lift ramps and bug around. It's got a oh probably four thousand pound winch on the front of it, and um, yeah, four ton suspension with um, four wheel electric brakes on it. And look, it's a good thing. Um, the main reason I was selling it, it's a, a, um, the main deck is 10 foot by 6 foot in the old scale. And when I put a tractor up on there, I had to make sure that the tractors were narrow enough. And like most of mine are, and like it's, I've had it for many, many years. And, um, but being 3 metres or 10 foot on the deck, I could never put an implement on, or if I went to buy a tractor somewhere... I'd have to do another trip. I'd have to buy the tractor one day, then go back and pick up the implement the next and all that sort of thing. So um, I always reckoned before I retired, I'd go and buy a new one and, you know, a little bit longer. So so I've bought a, a new trailer and I'll pop a photo or two in here and um, I'll pick it up in a few weeks. Um, I may have it for the tractor trick for the club, I don't know. Um, but it's a fully galvanised, hot dipped galvanised trailer. Now, um, it is made in China, the base part. The, the, the deck and the galvanising and all that is made in China. But um, it's hot dipped galvanised at 400 degrees. And I, I was all over it yesterday. I was climbing under it and bloody looking at things. And um, Look, it's, it's good. Um, the deck is fine. It's 3 mil checker plate, but... Um, it's a bit buckly because of the galvanising process, which I don't care about that. That's fine. Um, it's got six big tie-down Ds on each side. Um, but the thing is that the reason I went that way is, I was telling you, just for a standard one with ramps, it was 16250 Well, this trailer is $9,950 with six months rego. Um, it's three and a half tonne rated. Um, it has 4.5 ton suspension under it. Now the suspension gets put on in Brisbane, Australia here, and there's a heavy duty hub on the trailers called a Dexter hub. It's got heavy duty Dexter hubs all the way around. Four and a half thousand pound suspension. No, four and a half thousand kilogram suspension. Um, all the bearings in it are Japanese Koyo bearings. Um, no Chinese stuff. Um, the wiring looks good. Um, very heavy up around the pull hitch where the ball and that is. I'll probably take that out and put a Cruise Master DA35 there. But the advantage is with it, there's no ramps. It's a tilt trailer. 
Um, it's hydraulic tilt, so it's got a battery there. The only thing it hasn't got is a way of charging the battery, so I'll need to run a um, drill a hole in the toolbox on the front and run an Anderson lead up in there. So while I'm driving, um, I'm keeping that battery in top line, and um, it came with one nine five. 15 tyres on it um, and I've got them to put two, two, five, 15 light truck tyres on it um, with a spare, same price um, but it's got hydraulic tilt so you open the toolbox, you grab there's a there's a, a corded remote and there's in the box there's a hydraulic tank with an electric motor and a reservoir and all that 12 volt and so um, you can get to a job, you can undo the catches um, press the remote and the thing will just tilt for you and you can run your gear off and on and um, so it's hydraulic tilt and it's got a 12,000 pound electric winch up the front of it for pulling dead stuff up and the other advantage to me was not having to have ramps um, if I take that club engine I did up somewhere I used to have to run extra ramps and things and take extra ramps well if I can just use the winch to lower it and just tilt the trailer and run it back down you've got the full width of the deck which is six foot six um, just over two meters and five millimeters um, wide so um, just find some level ground you can run an engine down and the other advantage is like the farm halls you know the tricycle tractors with the two back wheels um, that are spread out in the front um, cultivating wheels or the, the narrow fronts um, you used to have to always get an extra ramp and you know bounce it up on wood or do something. So now just with tilt, um, 12,000 pound winch, you can drive it straight up and hold the, they've got cordless remotes there too. So you can have the remote in your hand and you can drive your tractor up and just slowly lower it, bang, down and lock him up and away you go. So for the money, <coughs> for the money, um, the the steel to build a new trailer is a bit over twelve, and the suspension was a bit over twelve thousand bucks. So I was a bit concerned about um, on the on the A frame at the front at C channel, and in the photos, the photos are actually a bit old, and in photos it looked like a rolled C channel, but it's not. It's a proper structural C channel, one hundred and twenty five mil by fifty, I think it was. Um, and then down one side where the wiring goes, I've got pipe welded in there to shield the wiring. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> and um, I hopped under where the where the A-frame goes and hooks onto the pivot. Um, they've got like a, a bit of box section welded to the main C-channel going down the side. The camera shut down on time. Um, but yeah, where the box comes down for the side for the pivot, <clears throat> it's got um, like a bit of box section there with a welded in sleeve and then the A-frame comes down it's got a big hunk of angle iron there and <clears throat> the bolt goes through and it's got nylon lock nuts and that and that's the pivot and it also has one in the middle of the pull as well <clears throat> oh, man. so in the middle, the middle pull it's a bit light and pissy really um, it's just a couple of bits of angle line that come down there. Well, they do a nice structural member, but bits of angle line that come down and then the bolt goes through there. So it's got three pivots for the tilt um, and they're using um, metric 8.8 .8 bolts. So I think when I get it, I'll pull those bolts out um, where, the, where the thick angle line comes down for the pull. I'll probably make up a couple of washers in the lathe here, thick ones. So because it's only probably five mil the angle that's um, used for the pivot and I might make that a 10 mil washer and tack that on and just give it extra surface area I, I don't know if I got it or not but it's probably one of those things I'll just do because I won't be able to stop fiddling and um, same with the bits of angle line coming down the middle so um, they've sold a lot of them um, the car blokes have been buying them because um, because of the tilt you can actually um, yeah, just run up on them without having to have ramps and get over if the car's low. So, um, you, the exact same trailer um, you can have in 4.5 ton. 
It's the exact same body, it's the exact same springs, and that's why the springs on the three and a half or the four and a half, um, with the 225 15 tyres on it, but they have to have the heavy duty 70 mil ball up the front. So, so yeah, old mate did me a deal. So there's 10 grand. Um, I'll have it in a few weeks, no rush for it, but um, yeah, that's a that's something I've been talking about doing for ages. And um, is they they bring the decks in, and uh, I had a good yarn to them about how they did it all. And, um, they bring the decks in, and with no wheels, no springs, or anything like that on them, and they 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 layer them with wood like wafers, and they have a forty foot container, and they bring them in just chockers with the one size trailer, with no. Um, and they're probably low profile, like the mudguard sticks up 175 mil, so that's what, 7 inches. And um, yeah, they stack them all in, then they get them to Australia, they pull them out, clean them up, um, and then they get the Australian um, suspension and all put on in Australia. So um, look, and, and don't be fooled about their suspension being Australian, it's, it's probably still comes from China or wherever. The Australian um, suspension comes from. Um, but it's all fitted in Australia. It doesn't come, and they and they do that apparently for um, shipping. Yeah, just so it's they can get more trailers in a shipping container and bring them out here. So, um, old mate at Jinjin Barry, um, he's selling them the same trailer in Brisbane as around thirteen thousand. Um, yeah, we hopped online and found out, and he said, "Oh, he said there's thirty two dealers for the same factory in Brisbane that bring them in and manufacture them. They become the Australian manufacturer, and." Um, yeah, there's 32 dealers around the country, and he in Jinjin, he's got his markups less, but he's um, last year he won the prize for the dealership groups for selling the most trailers Australia wide, up which is 50 kilometres from here. So, um, so that's good. He's just up the road. I got on well with him. Did the deal there, and then got him to upgrade the tyres for free from 195 to 225 light trucks, a bit, little bit wider sort of thing. Um, and yeah, nothing was a problem. So I've paid the deposit. Um, I'll, when it comes here, I'll, I'll be wagging my tail with my new toy. So um, yeah, I'll have you there for sure, helping out. <laughs> helping walk around and have a look at it. Um, he's also got for sale up there the straps that you, you bring in behind a tractor wheel and then you run a ratchet strap through them and you ratchet strap the front wheels by the tyres, not by the eyes that I've got on mine and um, I'm going to buy a couple of them off him and give that a go. I've, I've always just had two tie downs under my axle where the radius rods go at the front and then a draw bar or something at the back there to hook on. So I'll still use the draw bar or whatever at the back but the front there, I, I'll like they do on the cars, I'll try clamping the wheels on them just on the tyres and just see how it goes because sometimes when you clamp forward it's if you're a little bit crooked it's hard to get them both tied at the same time. So I'm going to try that, see how it goes. Um, but yeah, I'll have to get the 135 on and find the point of balance and make sure I've got 200 kilos load on the back of the ute. And so I'll probably have to put a couple of marks on the floor just to, just to work out how far back or forward it has to be. Um, make sure the loads... I, I like things nice and balanced and you can tow um, well. So, um, so I'll have that for the Fergie muster next year and yeah, running around here, it'll be a handy thing here. And if I go and buy some dead tractors to pull apart, or tractors with flat tyres and things, well, it's always been a hassle getting them up the ramps and keeping them straight and all that. So um, it looks like I can run the winch out. Then if I put a, a pulley block, tie a pulley block to one of the tyres, I can pull it sideways either way. So anyway, so I'm a bit excited about that. Um, <laughs> lucky I bought it yesterday morning. I said to Judith, I'm going to have to buy that trailer. She said, oh, okay. And um, went and had a look, and then yesterday afternoon the rates come in. <laughs> the, the land taxes, you would call them in the States, but the rates come in, so there's six grand out of the pocket. <laughs> so I said to the dude, shit, I'm lucky I bought that trailer bloody in the morning because in the afternoon you would have been looking sideways at me. So, <laughs> but anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, but look, that's it. Um, I'm sorry there's not much content this week, it's just I've been laid up, and, um, and I'm going to try and sit tight. Not this weekend, the weekend after we go on camping. Um, so that'll be a sit around, take it easy thing hopefully. And um, yeah, I'm just I'm just trying to get it back to where it was and I've, I have no idea what I did with me knee. 
Um, the first time I did it, I knew I jumped down off the truck and I, I felt it. But this time, I, I just had no clue what I've done. Um, I got the Dexter running. Um, the hydraulics work, it needs an oil change in the back end, it's jerky. Um, I jumped on, I, I tried the clutch and the clutch was free, it's not stuck or anything like that. Um, I do have quite a few parts coming for it. it it's quite smoky, um, as in blow by, it really needs a set of rings, um, which we will probably do. Um, I can't do the rings until I pull it apart. Um, I think it's a 2.2 inch bore, a 4.2 inch bore, sorry, being that serial number, but um, I've got to get the rings out because I want to have a look at the pistons and see what they're like um, and see if the diesel rings fit the piston seeing it's a forward block or just what's going on there. Um, I found it difficult to find. I, I can find the part numbers for the ring sets but nothing sort of crosses over and Ford New Holland don't make them anymore. So um, there's a mob in Melbourne. Um, auto surplus and they make piston rings and things so we can always go that way and they have a few rarities too by size so we might be able to go that way so um, so I've ordered top and bottom gaskets and um, things like that just for I, I think I should do it um, just to make sure I'm, there's no use having this tractor and running around and this blow by just pouring <laughs> pouring out there's no sense in that um, so um, that, that, and that'll be an interesting little job, so yeah, we'll see. But anyway, look, that's enough for today. Um, there's no real walk around video, there's nothing nothing going on because I've been sitting on my dot um, in the shed here trying to look after myself. Um, club meeting on Sunday, so we'll go to that. Um, but yeah, knees, knees are coming good, like they're so much better than they were. But, um, and, but they're not right yet, so I'm just taking it easy, so um, we'll see how we go, so. Okay, thanks for stopping by. Um, we'll catch you next week. I might see if I can get the Rally um, Grand Parade out if I can. Um, it just depends what, you know, I might have to take the laptop inside and let it upload overnight or something like that. So we'll just see, see how we go with that. All right, we'll catch you later, eh? See ya.